Okay, everybody, we are back in Siphon Land. This is where we did the tutorial on the Vampire Siphoning of Health. But this time we're going to play a sound when we eliminate somebody. Let's try that one more time. See, it's a different sound. So what we're doing is when we eliminate somebody, we're playing a random sound of four sounds. Another sound again. Let's learn how to do that. Yeah, I just want to say really quickly, thank you to everybody over on Patreon. You guys are absolute legends for being there. It is very helpful and keeps these tutorials going. All right, let's get into how to do this with verse and another way to do it, which is with sound cues. Very, very cool stuff. Okay, we're inside of UEFN. We are in Siphon Land, as I've shown you guys in the past tutorials. Just a very simple little place. Got a bit of story behind it. It's just this little outpost in the middle of nowhere that uh, you go to when you want to get some health off of another character <laughs> or play some video games. Anyhow, we have our game manager here. If you don't know how to make a game manager, I've got a couple of tutorials here. Both are linked below in the description on how to make a game manager. So we're not going to cover that. And this is also covered in the last tutorial on that vampire effect. We also have four audio devices here and we have one more over here, which is actually going to be our other way of doing things, which is a sound cue. It's just an audio player right now. And then the rest of this is just simple. Two spawners here and then an item grantor which grants everybody a weapon to start with so nothing special going on there let's take a look at the verse code first and then i'll show you the other way that we can go about making this happen okay we're inside of verse now we are going to hit Control b to get rid of our explorer make a little bit of space here for all of our code to show and one of the things that we're going to be using is one of these libraries the verse.org random because we're going to get a random number so make sure that that gets put in there and then let's take a look at what's going on in our editables we have our four audio player devices. Why do we have four audio player devices? Because in my content browser, I brought in into my sounds folder, a limb sound one, two, three, four. And you can see they are all different. We also have a sound cue, which has these four sounds in it. I'm gonna cover this in a second. So these are my four sounds and I'm gonna control them with the audio players inside of verse, which is done right here. We also have one more editable for our Q audio player, which we're gonna cover in a second. The other thing that we need to add to this code from the last tutorial is we wanna know when somebody's eliminated. So on player spawned, we are getting the damaged event and the shield damaged event. And we also wanna grab the eliminated event and call on player eliminated. It's a method that we make and it's just down below. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's our function that we call when a player is eliminated. We're gonna pass in the elim result, which is just what I've called it. It's an elimination result. So it's an object that carries a bunch of stuff in it, mainly who eliminated who and who got eliminated is gonna end up in this result. So we're gonna grab that by the eliminated FC, which is the four character here. And we get the elim result, eliminated character. So that's who got eliminated. And then the eliminating character is here. And we're gonna grab these two and see if it's a self elim first. If it is, then pretty much do nothing, obviously, because we wanna know when somebody eliminated somebody. So if they're not the same character, then we're going to head down into this section and it says if eliminated agent is an agent so we're going to check to see if it's an actual agent and then we're going to cast it to a player if all of this checks out here then we know that it's an actual player that did the eliminating this is a normal elim we'll put that little print up it's handy and we'll play elim audio passing in the agent that did the eliminating okay so let's take a look at the play elim audio method which is right here play elim audio needs an agent because we passed in the eliminating agent and in this case I've done Q audio player play agent now audio player devices have a play method you can pass in the agent or not depending on who you want to have listen to the sound and we can also do this other method here let's call it this one out so this one won't work but this is the one I was using so you heard it go random we can also do this other one and this is kind of important to learn which is why we needed that random library we're going to get random int somewhere between one and four. So if you want an integer, if you want to do something random, you can do it this way. So I thought I would explain this way as well, because it's kind of handy. But in this case, we need four audio devices 
to make this happen. So if you're a little bit short on memory or you don't want to manage a bunch of audio devices, then you can do it the Q way. But there are reasons of why you'd want to separate out audio devices because you may want to reuse your audio sounds for some other thing. And in this case, we'd only want to play it one out of four times or 25% of the time. It could be this, but it is random. So you get 25% chance. The random int's going to return a number between one and four. And if it's one, then do the first one, two, the second one, and so forth. And that's how you can randomize with Verse how to make something happen. In this case, play a sound when somebody's eliminated. But the cooler way, we'll comment this out really quickly. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know, you can do a less signed and a hashtag and a greater sign and a hashtag to comment out a whole group of code, just in case you didn't know. It doesn't matter where these tabs are. This tab can be anywhere. Uh, if you want to keep it clean, then just uh, tab it back to where it should be kind of idea like that and clean up that. And then this little block of code is now a full comment. So none of this will run. That's why it's green. And then we can go Q audio player dot play agent. And this Q audio player is our last audio device. This one here is our Q audio player and it plays. If we check over in our details panel, we can see it says elim sound one underscore Q. So that's different than what the other ones are. These were all sound waves. This one's sound Q. If you want to make a sound Q, you can right click and go to audio and inside of here is sound cue or you can just right click on any wave file that you have and create a cue. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a new one and we're just going to create this cue. Nothing to be worried about here. Very simple. We'll leave it as the name that it is. It doesn't really matter. We're going to double click, which will open up this window here, which is our sound cue creator. So we have our original Elim sound two in here and we have an output. If we double click this, it will play the sound that this is. So we want all four sounds in here. We're making a, a sound object, so to speak. So we'll bring in the first one, the third one, and the fourth one, like that. Once we brought all four of these in, we're gonna move the output over here just a little bit out of the way, clean this up. So we've got our one, two, three, four. These are all just sound nodes. Just line these up cleanly. And then we're going to add in the random node, which is over in the right-hand side in the sound node list. So we'll add this in. Now it's only got two inputs on this side and one output. So we're going to actually plug the output into the output of the sound cue. And then we're going to add two more inputs. So we'll go plus plus, and then we can just drag these four into the random node. And what this is going to do is it's going to randomize the output from these four sounds. So let's play that. See that one. And I'm just double clicking, right? So every time this sound cue plays, this node tree will run. So that's it. That's done. We're going to hit save, close that. And then if we go and select our audio device on the stage and we select our elim sound two underscore Q, which we just made and hit this little arrow here, it will put that in there. Or you can just drag this on or you can select it from the list and it will show up inside of there too. And we just played this one audio device inside of verse just like this and it will randomize which sound to play. So if you have very specific sounds that are only used for a thing, this is the best way to do this for sure. It's easy, you use one audio device and it randomizes it without having to do a bunch of burst code. Hopefully that's kind of interesting. And if you have any questions, let me know anytime and I'll see you guys in the next one.